You've already won half the battle by just starting this record. Not overnight, let's get that straight right from the start, but in due time. Are you ready to start on this great adventure? Cedric Highsmith, Duke University. How's it going, everybody? Free and poor. Um, we're out here LARPing around. And I think it's finally time to actually do a comprehensive review on the CMMG 22 conversion kit for AR-15s. So for those of you who don't know, you can get a drop-in bolt conversion kit for your regular 5.56-223 AR-15 that converts the chamber to accommodate 22 LR or 22 long rifle ammunition. Literally, the only thing you have to do is pop open or separate your receivers, pull your charging handle back and remove your old bolt and throw this thing in there. So you can see mine's really fucking dirty and that's one of the things about this conversion kit. Uh, it's just the nature of 22 LR to be just kind of a dirty running round. And uh, you throw it in a stainless steel bolt carrier group and uh, it just looks so much worse because it doesn't have that black nitrite finish that generally hides some of the uh, carbon buildup that we see with 5.56 five, rounds. It sits on this rail system, so instead of actuating your rifle's buffer, like your buffer tube and your buffer spring, uh, it just cycles independent within itself. So, like that. So every time you fire, it'll use this little tiny spring rather than using the entire rifle assembly. This comes with a couple of its own issues, but uh, it's how they make it work. It came with the conversion bolt itself and then three 25 round magazines. 22 Plinkster did a review on one of these like 12 years ago. And um, he said he was kind of skeptical of it. He was concerned with, uh, you know, like accuracy, felt it was kind of gimmicky or whatever. But these things have been around for a long time. And I know people who have had them for a long time. If you treat it as what it is, which is a training aid, um, it is absolutely worth every penny I've spent on it so far. So I've put roughly a thousand rounds through this kit. I've tested several different ammunition types. Uh, Aguila, I think, or Aguila, however the fuck you say it. Federal ammunition, Remington, Remington Thunderbolt or whatever the hell it is. And all of them have functioned essentially the same thing. I get about one, maybe two malfunctions per hundred rounds. That sounds like a lot, and it is, it's an ass load. But it's also this non-proprietary to the AR-15 platform system made to convert it to 22LR. Uh, LR. If you're not asking too much of the system and you recognize its shortcomings, then uh, I think it's generally a pretty good investment. Of these malfunctions, what was I experiencing? Well, uh, I was getting a lot of failure to extracts, I was getting a lot of stove pipes. I was getting a lot of um, double feeds. And I think the most common was light primer strikes, which I, I don't really know whether or not to attribute those to the kit itself or to the ammunition I was using. I think 22LR is just kind of finicky like that. Um, so I don't blame the kit for a lot of that issue, a lot of that stuff. One of the malfunctions that I kept having were as a result of me resting my magazine on the ground while I was shooting, which generally is not an issue if you're running, uh, you know, a center fire cartridge. But with this, for some reason, I don't know if you can see that or not. There's a little bit of play in the magwell uh, compared to aluminum or steel magazine or even a PMAG. So my assumption is when you're sitting it on there, it's just, it's not feeding into 
like I said, this amalgamation of shit <laughs> that is inside of the kit in order to make it work. If you're using the kit like I suggest you use it, or the people who are buying this kit for the intended purpose that I had, um, you know, when you get these malfunctions and stuff, it's good practice. It's good practice to train on rifle malfunctions, double feeds, um, you know, shit goes wrong and you need to be able to train on it. But if you have like a decent rifle setup, it's not always going to present itself like that, you know, uh, with this BCM, the only malfunctions I've ever had with it were uh, user error. Another concern I had with the kit was how accurate was it? Um, I didn't want to be training at my regular distances and completely be missing shots. And um, throughout my testing, um, I can generally hit a regulation size target like this one over here uh, consistently every time at 100 yards. Now, the groupings are not great. Um, at 100 yards, you're looking, you know, wider than you can stretch your fingers. But at 50 yards and closer, I've seen within three inches. Three inch groups are good enough for me whenever I think about the application of what I'm doing with the 22 kit and um, how it's not, you know, I'm not training precision shooting when I'm using this kit. The cons for the 22 conversion kit across the board, whenever you watch reviews and stuff over it, it's pretty much the same no matter what. Um, it gets really dirty. It has a really high rate of malfunctions and um, it's not super accurate. But when you consider those last two points, like dirty, yeah, whatever, but uh, I put probably 300 rounds since my last cleaning of it and it's still functioning as good as it normally does i'm not going to say flawlessly because it never functions flawlessly but um as for the last two points you know accuracy and malfunctions um these are things in my opinion that somewhat simulate uh stressful situations should you be in a combative situation right so what happens if you're in a firefight and your gun malfunctions and you have a double feed or a light primer strike or, um, you know, stove pipe or whatever, you, you ought to know how to cycle through that, how to function in it. So, <laughs> so in my opinion, those two things are, are obnoxious. They can be, but, uh, they're, they're almost like something you can't get if you buy a quality rifle um, because BCM relatively accurate I'm not out shooting it as far as accuracy goes and uh, they function really really well so you're not getting a lot of um, malfunctions so when you throw a kit like this in it it kind of creates an opportunity to train on those things uh, without manually inducing a double feed or something oh another thing um, as far as accuracy goes so the zero does shift down a bit, um, but at seven yards and closer, if you've ever used an EOTech, you know it's got the circle and the dot in the middle. Well, the bottom of that circle is your zero at seven yards if you zero from 100, which I think most people should do. That's a pretty standard zero, and it, it makes it easier on everybody. Um, <clears throat> now, the, the bottom of your donut is your seven yard zero. And that's super handy whenever, you know, working from a close range. That is accurate with the 22 kit. As you move out a little bit, it'll drop a little lower um, as far as your center dot and stuff. But it's not so significant that I felt the need to change my zero on my optic as I was using the, the conversion kit. Um, and that's, that's huge to me because now we can get into the pros. So the cons, yeah, um, let's let's do a breakdown real quick. Old school, like I used to. So cons, we have, it gets really dirty. Um, it hasn't affected the functionality or anything yet, but the barrel gets dirty as fuck. You can see that it leaves, you know, chunks of shit in there. I don't know if it's lead from the 22 rounds or what, 
but in my experience best way to fix that um, send a couple rounds of 556 through it and then clean it as you would normally uh, second point not super accurate that's okay because of the the use case um, third point uh, malfunctions again you know you get a lot of double feeds misfires uh, light primer strikes or not misfires I'm sorry there's been no misfires <laughs> luckily um, you get a lot of double feeds light primer strikes stove pipes uh, stuff like that uh, like I said if you're using it as a training aid in the field this can be seen as a pro um, this is basically the only time I would ever say something malfunctioning may be seen as a pro and then fourth point the 25 round magazines sit in such a way that the bolt release does not catch and function properly so we see 556 magazine when you go empty your bolt will hold back just like that but the problem is when you go to eject the magazine with the 22 kit your bolt falls forward because your bolt catch did not engage and that may not sound like a huge deal to a lot of people and it really isn't um, I can put a video up here of me doing an emergency reload with this kit and it was relatively seamless uh, it's akin to reloading an AK right you'll have to charge the handle every time you put in a new magazine because you can't just drop the bolt the bolt didn't hold back so that can be seen as a con too it's actually like the most uh, useless con <laughs> in my opinion because uh, if you want to practice emergency reloads you know just hitting your bolt catch and going to work that's that'd be great unfortunately that's not something you can do with this bonus con uh bonus con not really a huge deal because like i said we're not using this for you know flat range 1r1s or anything like that um i tried to use my pack three timer and while you can adjust the sensitivity of a pack three club timer um they suggest that you don't and when i was using this trying to use my timer uh it was not picking up on it so the 22 is not loud enough to be picked up on the you know industry standard shot timer that it seems like most people use so that kind of sucks but if you're using like a phone uh, uh, app timer or something like that it, it does it does pick up so like i said little little bonus con not really a huge deal so what are the pros to the cmmg 22 conversion kit well um it's election year and we know that the closer we get to november the more expensive ammunition is going to get uh, if you guys remember in 2020 it was a, a a clusterfuck of all kind of things that made it absolutely miserable to have this as a hobby or a passion or whatever you want to call it um so we were looking at dollar one dollar per round of 556 five, um it's not come down a lot from that actually if you're shooting fi uh, standard 55 grain m193 then you're looking at anywhere from 45 to 55 cents per round where this comes into play 22 lr still absurdly expensive today as compared to what it was 15 years ago but you're looking at five cents around six seven cents around depending on where you look so your output is roughly 10 times more you're, you're getting 10 more shots for you know your 50 cents or nine more shots i guess per 50 cents um so when you look at the graph <laughs> like you spend 180 but well i spent 180 bucks if you guys are on telegram i suggest you join mr guns and gears channel because he is constantly dropping throughout the day several deals on ammunition firearms optics parts whatever and um i actually saw the other day whereas i bought this for 185 dollars uh, the same kit with three magazines was on sale for $140. So 
if you find a deal like that, great. But $180 is what I spent on it, plus 70-ish bucks for a thousand rounds of 22 LR. That puts you at 250 bucks for a case of ammo, which 250 bucks translated to 556 five, would get you a half case of ammo, right? So you're looking at 500 more rounds of shooting for the same price. But the more you shoot it, the more money I'm saving um, and, and the more I get to shoot, you know? I'm essentially shooting for a tenth of the price that I was previously, which is fantastic. Depending on how much you guys get out to actually LARPerate, you know, it may, it may change your perspective a little bit, but I have found this profoundly worth the cost. I had mentioned to a coworker that I had bought one and he looked at me like I had a dick on my forehead and was like, oh, dude, Smith & Wesson sells the M&P 22 for like 400 bucks. Why wouldn't you just fucking get another gun? Why wouldn't you just get a 22? Well, because my intention is not to stack up a bunch of fucking guns. I can only use one at a time. And I spent a lot of money on this thing. So I would rather get the one-to-one -one training and usage out of my actual setup the one that I would I would use should anything, you know, God forbid anything should happen where I have to deploy an actual rifle and kit. Because I don't want another fucking, I don't want another gun just sitting around. I want to be able to use this one-to-one, -one, exactly my setup, and train with it how I would, how I would use it, right? Um, Airsoft is great, but it's not one-to-one. -one. Um, other guns are cool but I don't have the desire to go through all that paperwork and spend all that money. So when I saw this, you know, I've known people who have had these for years, uh, you know, over a decade, and they're cool as shit, and they can save you a lot of money. It's not exact, it's not exact training, because you're not getting the recoil impulse, and you're not getting, like I said, the accuracy, or, uh, you know, even the, even the stress of shooting a, a a center fire cartridge however you are getting the functionality and feel and you're 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 using your rifle as you would and that i think is worth its weight in gold so who would i say this kit is not for this kit is not for a hobbyist 22 lr shooter whose intention is to shoot from the bench at 100 plus yards and make accurate shots that's not gonna happen. You're not gonna get that. And that experience is not worth the money that you're gonna spend on this because your shots are gonna fly. So who is this kit actually for? Well, it's for people like me and you. People who want to work on their kit ergonomics, um, maintain, or you know, work on their rifle functionality and maintain live fire in the process. You know, uh, dry fire is great. Everybody should do dry fire. But dry firing with a rifle, there's really only so much you can do. You can do like target acquisition drills and stuff. Um, I guess you can do, you know, reload drills and stuff. But at the end of the day, when it comes to working on your kit and um, making sure that your shit works for you, if you're not getting out in the field and using it, you're not going to have a real idea of what's wrong with it right every time i go out onto a field exercise somebody has something that they know they need to do better and that's why it's important to do after action reports and why it's important to keep a notebook on you like keeping get a right in the rain and keep a fucking ballpoint pen in your kit if something goes wrong write that shit down don't forget it because you can spend all the money you want on kit but if you don't fucking use it, then you're gonna go out there over encumbered with a bunch of shit that you just absolutely don't need and that doesn't work for you. So this, this kit, this 22LR conversion kit, I think is a fantastic way to get out there and, and recognize your shortcomings. This is a great investment for people like us. Um, as for your hobbyist shooters, your boomer uncle, uh, they might not really understand the reasoning behind it or the purpose of it, but for prepared citizens who are training to protect themselves and their communities and working with others who are 
equally as interested and also holding the same moral compass um i think it's a great tool i think it's fantastic i think there's plenty of other videos out on the internet but uh it seems like there's been an uptick in guys picking these up lately and uh for a good reason and if you haven't gotten your hands on one yet i highly suggest you know that you do because for 70 dollars you can put down a thousand rounds on your larperator drills whereas that would cost you 500 600 bucks just running 556 five, oh yeah and for everybody who complains about the christ posting uh go to church jesus christ is lord and we love him and we love you thank you bar none the worst part of this is loading these magazines <laughs> it is so awful one at a time miserable and then your hands get all covered in lead because it's 22. uh for anybody who's asking what gloves i'm using these are the mechanics uh mechanics power impacts i literally got them at walmart for like 15 bucks and then if you like the other gloves that i use in my other videos uh no you don't i'm just telling you right now they are like those basic cut proof blue collar gloves that guys get in refineries um they feel like sandpaper but i think that's why i like them because the dexterity is so much better than even something like this uh, it's just it's super thin material but it's great uh, because like i said it's cut proof it keeps your hands somewhat clean and um shit and they're super cheap so if you insist on knowing what they are um that particular brand is called pug i think they're just called uh cut resistant work gloves or something i don't know there's a glare right here on the camera and i think it's because my screen protector is cracked so that's not cool Something like this, you know what I'm saying?